Hello everyone. We are now in week 11 and I welcome you to this new dangerous time when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Kind of messes with the timing thing, but that's okay. No, we are here uh, week 11 and so you've just turned in your Project One video lessons. I've started going through the, those. I've been able to evaluate, provide feedback for about 10 out of the, what, 50 so far? So I'm 20% done, which is good. So uh, things are moving along. I'm providing feedback as best I can and uh, providing helpful feedback for you and your future, uh, future teaching. Now, uh, we today I'm going, we're going to continue talking about consonants, but also we're going to continue talking about your final project. Now, I, I think you noticed we did not have a midterm test, and we do not have a final test either. So those are th those are our blessings here. We're, we're a practical class, so we have your your teaching. With your first one you just turned in. And then your second micro-teaching, which we'll talk about at the end of this lecture. We have a few more uh, consonant pairings that I want to take a look at because they directly relate to our uh, second project. And we look at the screen, we see the D and so the D, the D sound, and the th, the sound. And it's important to remember that the th, the 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 the, how we say it, versus the d d d. Both of these these are voice as we can feel, but the d, whose closest approximate would be the uh, Korean d, we see the d d. The tongue goes up, touches the back of the teeth, um, the alveolar ridge uh, back there. D d d d d d. And the lips are open and the teeth are slightly open as well. D, 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 d. So we have that with the the, 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 the. Again, it's voiced and the tongue goes in between. It's interdental. The, 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 the. Lips are open and the tongue is down and the it goes in between. So d, the, d, the. Of course, we don't have this sound in Korean, the th, the sound. So it can be, it's usually approximated as a d sound by learners. So it's something we need to be aware of as we move along. Let's take a look and practice. I hope you're practicing along as well. So, well, I'll read and then we all read together, okay? We see dan, dan, van, van. Make sure your tongue goes in between your teeth there, van, dan, van. Notice we have the, the, or the, 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 or the, both are okay. Together, 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 together. If we say it with a D, it be together. Feathers, 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 feathers. Smoother, smoother smoother rather 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 clothes 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 guys have that brothers 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 mother 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 this 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 that 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 some people uh, some dialects of English, some, well, different pronunciations, they don't say this or that. They say this and that. They use the D sound. Uh, it's a different kind of English, so it's not wrong. It's because there's no one, there's no one absolute correct kind of English. But uh, we do hear that, and it, it is something that is marked as wrong on tests. So... Uh, it's something for us to be aware of for our students to know about, especially when they're in elementary school and they're learning and uh, their tongues are having a hard time. So uh, 
it's something to be aware of that yeah, some people do say dis that but it's a it's a, on our english test here in korea they are it is marked as incorrect so we should try to teach and train our students to say this that live breathe there those okay but we see but with there we see dare dare again so much of this and that uh some people do say over dare over dare dim dare woods uh, that's how some people talk uh, especially in the american south uh, what i mean is uh, places like well uh, like tennessee alabama uh, georgia some people talk like that and so uh this is quite common you know, dare there those those again some people say those like those but that's okay those those ida either ida either mm -hmm. and another leather then of course day they day they day they make sure to get your tongue in between your teeth that helps out a whole lot with the and the sounds moving on we've got s and th these are similar again s and th we see s the s sound the classic s sound the th lips are partially open teeth are closed and the tongue s the tip is not touching it's further up s but the tongue is raised for the th sound and for the th think sound th the what you might say the light th so it's not the the it's the s think 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 this is again interdental uh your tongue is in between your teeth but it is voiceless so that's the big difference th, th, if we voice it, it becomes t the the if it's voiceless it's th, 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 th. if um some people talk with what's called a lisp and that's as in they have uh, a hard time with some words uh i and so they would pronounce their s sounds as uh, the th sound the th so so some would be pronounced thumb uh, song would be pronounced thong and so i i had that i spoke like that until through what middle school and i got made fun of enough that i slowed down my talk so it is something that happens so be careful of this as well and pay attention to it because uh, it is part of our speech S and th, th. So let's check this out. We see mouse, mouse, mouth, mouth. Some, some, thumb, thumb. You should feel it. You should definitely feel it. Worth, worth. Smiths, smiths, smiths. This one, even though it's a small word, we go smith. Our tongue is going up and down. Three, three, three. Thirst, thirst, thirst. Thirst. Good. Sheath, sheath, sheath. Thick, thick. But then we go thick to sick, sick. Sink, sink. So sink and think are different things. I'll, um, I'll see if I can find that commercial. They have a they have an example of that of somebody who is sinking, sinking, who is sinking, as in their boat is going underwater, and someone mishears it as thinking, thinking. Pass, pass, path, path. And we have thin, thanks, breath, worth, author, birthday, moths, moths moths so you notice that th -s, th -s, th -s, 
at the end here. Moths, moths. That's things to watch out for for S and this last one is, of course, uh, L and R, which are di two different sounds, two separated sounds in English, but they're, they're not in Korean. L, we see la, la, la. If we say la, 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 the, our tongue goes up. Our lips are open, teeth are open. La, 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 la. And if we were to say ra, 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 notice that the lips are in different position. If la, la, ra, ra, the lips are in a different place. Teeth are still open, of course, and the tongue for a, ra, for r, is going down. It's pointing down. The middle part is up. So la, 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 ra, ra, ra. La, 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 ra, ra, ra. This might be some great difficulty. Uh, a lot of languages combine these two sounds but english separates them so going back and forth it can be hard bill bill holding holding tell tell pull pull small small little little golf golf help uncle ball owl always children restaurant restaurant proud russia really 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 clever rest clever rest interesting interesting married married grown up railway library library and australia 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 you finished and you've turned in your first project your first video lesson and I've started grading those and providing feedback on those. And overall, things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. So I'd like to introduce to you your second and final project, which is uh, it's another it's another teaching, but you're just focusing on activities, not introduction, pre-teaching, teaching, review, conclusion, not that part. Just the final, just your main activity. And to help you through this, uh, also, this is not a uh, an explicit video lesson like your first project. This, I want you to pretend, to act like you're teaching a class in person with students. So just act like you, you, like, like you imagine you being a teacher in front of students and record that. So things like video graphics and and optimal sound quality even though i need to be able to hear what you're doing it's not the most important thing uh video production isn't the most important thing for this lesson this is focusing on the activities and your body language so i need to be able to see you and your and also be able to hear you your voice delivery is very important so here's the situation your um hypothetical situation the challenge so your students have had consistent problems problems distinguishing and producing so that's listening and speaking certain english phonemes this is mostly created by l1 interference and their lack of practice in l2 english you'll need to create activities so the students can practice their listening and speaking skills in producing these phen phenomes correctly so the sounds and questions we see the minimal pairs P and F, the P, F, the B and V, B, V, the, the th, S sound, the Th and S, the C, D and the, the, the D, the, R and L, R, L, the J, J, and J, the, uh, J, Z sound. 
So you, you can choose whichever one you want. This is an individual project. And that's all. And uh, so you're going to make and show doing a listening activity to practice uh, these sounds and a speaking activity to practice these sounds. And remember, you are choosing one of these. There's, there's seven choices. Choose one, and that's good. This is a micro lesson, no more than 10 minutes. That part's important, having two activities. There's no, this is not a complete lesson. Just, uh, you'll need to choose what what, uh, what sound you want to do, and you will need to make a lesson plan. But you are not going to perform the lesson plan, just the activity part of lesson. And again, you have two activities, one that focuses on listening and one that focuses on speaking. And uh, here's the thing, you need to try to make your activities interactive so the students are actually doing things. They're using their skills. And uh, that is going to be a bit harder because there's not going to be students, but you need to pretend. So prepare activities for that. There's no minimal time, but the maximum time is 10 minutes. So that's also quite important. Uh, if you make your activities and record and it turns out it's, it's one minute, 30 seconds, if it's good, it's good. But I'm imagining you'd be three to five to seven to eight minutes. Uh, but there's a hard limit of 10 minutes just because there's a lot of videos to go through. And since you're not going to have actual students there to do the activities, uh, it won't be too long. But you need to prepare the activities and walk through, in introduce the activities, and make sure that uh, the viewer, me, can understand the activity of what you're trying to do, what you're having the students do. So you're going to be graded on the following. One, your teaching demeanors, your, your voice, your body language, your pose, all those things, poise as well. Uh, your ability to give instructions for your activities. Are they, your instructions clear, understandable? Are they sequential? First, do this. Second, do this. Third, do you model the activity? That's very important. Show the activity, show the students what you're going to do, what they're going to do before you, they do it. Do you have verbal instructions and do you have visual instructions? And then for your listening activity, does it effectively practice listening? Is it student-centered? Is it interactive? And your speaking activity, is it an active activity? Is it student-centered? Is it engaging? Does it practice their speaking? Do they actually make the sounds? <laughs> That's important. Then time management, really that just means are you finishing af uh, before 10 minutes? So that part shouldn't be a problem, but I need to have it there just in case. If someone makes a, a three-hour video, then, you know, I need to be able to correct that. So that's why we've been going over these sounds in our lectures. And these are sounds that Koreans have difficulty at first producing and distinguishing. And so these are where you're going, these are the trouble areas, the hot spots that you'll need to be aware of when you're teaching elementary school students. So you are watching this video May 10th, the Monday. I'm going to ask for it to be due May 30th. And so it's not a lot of time, but it is plenty of time for you to work things out and plan things out. And I'm going your first order of business is to just choose what sound you want. You can choose whichever, whichever one you want, but there'll be another smaller assignment where you just choose and submit which sounds, which uh, phonemes you're going to take. All right, excellent day. There we have it. There's our second and final and big project. Uh, semester it's focusing on student problems and how to address the you know, issues that students are having so it's a an immediate and practical thing that you need that as teachers we need to be able to do so it's time for us to start exercising those muscles as well 
as in you know troubleshooting problems that students have and trying to fix them, trying to alleviate them. Uh, so since we do not have a final exam and we did not have a midterm exam, these projects are how it is. And we need all the help we can get, like that raptor there. He's helping us out <laughs> with the electricity. I think he's trying to fix it. Anyways, uh, I'm going to attach some additional material uh, for this lecture just to help us practice the pronunciation of this week. Uh, we did have three pairs of them, and uh, so it's good to get some review and practice as well. Uh, for your homework, really the task at hand is to claim which which pronunciation pair you want to take and practice with. And that will be on E-Class. And make sure to review the work that we're going to be taking care of this week. And I'll be giving you feedback on your first video lessons throughout the whole rest of the week. So take care and be careful. Oh, and be careful of the T-Rex. We. Have a nice week. Goodbye.